Hello, my name is Glenn Dorsey and I have 35 years experience with the design, manufacture, and application of slip rings. I'm doing a series of videos addressing important topics regarding the use of slip rings in performance critical applications. As I mentioned in an earlier video, the job of a slip ring is to transfer an electrical signal across a rotating interface. A perfect slip ring would act as a perfect transmission line, but there's no such thing as a perfect transmission line, nor is there such a thing as a perfect slip ring. All transmission lines introduce perturbations or deviations to signals being transmitted. This is usually referred to as electrical noise. Today, we're going to talk about slip ring noise. Let me start out by saying that slip rings have been used successfully in a wide range of applications because modern slip ring materials and design practices have been developed that adequately deal with all noise components. This discussion is intended to show the various factors that must be balanced to help with the understanding of slip rings that will operate successfully in your application. Slip rings are usually not electrically active devices, so the slip ring itself does not produce a signal that acts to disturb a signal that is being transmitted. So where does slip ring noise originate? There are actually three sources of slip ring noise that I will discuss. First, there is resistive or ohmic noise. This is traditionally known as slip ring noise. Second, there's a frequency dependent noise usually called crosstalk. And thirdly, there's a deterministic noise or jitter caused by mismatches in the transmission line. I'm going to talk about traditional resistive noise in this video and devote separate videos to each of the other two. So what is resistive or ohmic noise? Slip rings contain sliding electrical contacts and as the brushes wipe across the ring, there are changes in the contact resistance between these elements. So let me illustrate. This is a, um, this is a slip ring, and this is a traditional brush block uh, using fiber brushes. And as the brushes wipe across the ring like that, there's a slight variation in the contact resistance between the brush surface and the ring surface that causes this resistive noise. Since Ohm's law says that the voltage level of the signal is proportional to the current times the resistance of the transmission line, any change to the resistance of the circuit results in a change in the voltage level and can be viewed as noise. So let's take a closer look at this resistive noise. Slip rings are sliding electrical contacts and there is some inevitable variation in resistance with rotation. This is traditional normal slip ring noise, and it's well below the noise floor for most signals. This oscilloscope trace is a good example of resistive slip ring noise. A typical slip ring will exhibit resistance change of between 4 and 40 milliohms, depending on contact materials and operating conditions. This resistance variation results in voltage change or noise in keeping with Ohm's law. For example, on a 100 milliamp signal, a 40 milliohm resistance variation equates to only 4 millivolts or about 50 dB down on a 1 volt signal. It's important to note that this value is well below the noise floor for almost all signals in this digital world. There is another type of resistive noise that has come to the forefront when passing high speed digital signals through slip rings. This noise is in the form of very short duration resistance spikes that can cause bit errors, and such a noise event is frequently called a microcut. These are detected on oscilloscopes at measurement bandwidths of greater than 1 megahertz and can become problematic if they reach values of several hundred milliohms. It is important to understand that these microcuts are not normal and represent a bit a slip ring failure if they cause reduction in bit error rates below acceptable levels. Typical causes are mechanical or chemical such as vibration, excessive wear debris, excess contact filming, or plating failures. The oscilloscope trace here shows a typical microcut event. 
The top trace shows high resistance signal spikes over one ohm, and that is spread out in the middle trace here into three pair of 30 kilohertz spikes. And there's some obvious attenuation as we progress. The other figure shows the vibration nodes of the brushes, and 30 kilohertz is the fundamental. And this shows that mechanical vibration is often part of the explanation of these microcuts. In cases where low noise is critical, redundant brushes can be used to minimize contact noise. One of the signal types that often cause concern with slippery noise are video signals. In the case of digital video, the earlier discussions about high-speed digital signals in, apply. In the case of standard analog videos, such as NTSC or PAL, the typical noise levels we saw earlier are still well below the noise floor for signals. It is much more critical to match the coaxial cable and to avoid noise from crosstalk. So in summary, slippering resistive noise is well below the noise floor in proper operation. Usually it's an end of life indicator or failure, and it must be measured at appropriate bandwidths. Of course, these points are valid only for properly designed instrumentation quality slip rings utilizing proper contact materials. It turns out that other noise sources are important, especially in high-speed data and video circuits. And this is a perfect introduction to our next video that will discuss frequency-dependent noise, which we usually call crosstalk. I invite you to join this discussion.